The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or when you use our code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a mom of three kids, ages two, five, and seven, and I live in Southern California. And I'm Megan. I am the mom of five kids, ages six through 17, and I live in Michigan. This is the Mom Hour, part of the Life Listened Network. Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 77 of the Mom Hour. I am Megan Francis, here as always with Sarah Powers, and today we're doing something that we do every now and again that we like to call the More Than Mom Hour, which is where we just talk about a grab bag, if you will, a (laughs) smorgasbord of topics that don't really relate to each other, (laughs) but are more about, you know, who we are as people and women more so than just motherhood. More Which we talk mom. about almost all the time. So right. this is a nice little break and a little breath of fresh air. And you get to find out stuff that you might find interesting about us or you might not find interesting. That's up to you. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah. So t- today we're focusing on a couple of different categories of things not related to motherhood. One is decor and decorating. This is going to be really fun. Megan's been decorating a new space she's going to tell us about. Um, and then also um, our favorite foods and drinks and cocktails, um, is specifically when we're eating out um, or going to coffee shops. So I don't think we've ever talked about that. And that will be that'll be a fun one. We're going into the holiday season if you're listening to this right when it comes out. And so that tends to be a time of year with more more opportunities for both eating out and decorating. (laughs) So yes, sort of timely here. Um, well let's talk about decorating and Megan, maybe back up, tell, tell the story of you have a new little room of your own. I do. Okay. So I have worked at, you know, at home or been self-employed, I will say for 15 years. And I have tried to rent a variety of office spaces (laughs) and it's never really worked out. Um, I finally realized that the reason it never works out is that I always rent office spaces that look like office spaces and I don't work in office. There's a reason I don't work in offices. I don't like being in offices. I am used to doing things like sitting with my feet on a sofa or, you know, my feet up on the sofa or like in bed or whatever. So I thought, well, what if I could find a space? that can function as an office, but actually I can make it feel like my home. Would Mm -hmm. I be more likely to go there? Uh, Especially if it's the other thing is a lot of times shared office space, there's like a lobby you have to walk through and talk to people. And I swear I'm not like (laughs) antisocial, but if I'm in a mood to just go work, I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. I do not want small talk. I don't want people dropping by. Um, So that was another kind of thing that just was always getting in the way when I would rent office spaces. So I finally, I've been looking for quite some time actually, but finally found the perfect space. It's right downtown, our cute little downtown area, right above the bookstore. And Aww. there's like a coffee shop around the corner and um, a great Middle Eastern place right downstairs. Uh, so it's like a really fantastic location and just happened that some place came up available. And so there's like a little room in the front. Uh, where there's like an area for a desk, like a kind of a little work nook. And then there's a bigger room in the back, which is like my retreat. And so I'm Mm -hmm. treating it very much like a home away from home. Um, It looks like an apartment there, but there's no kitchen. You know, it's just like, so, but I got to decorate it. And it was so fun because um, I've never really gotten to have a space that's completely just for me that is also contained enough. It's small enough that I can kind of do whatever I want because I don't have right. to buy a lot of furniture. The, there wasn't much paint involved. Um, but I've totally just got to v- kind of envision it from the ground up. And it's been really fun. Really, really fun. So, so I, I can share pictures. Yes, I was going to say, we will put pictures up um, in the show notes for episode 77. But I want to kind of like just find out more about your process because you love kind of vintage and antique type stuff. I do. Did you start with furniture? Did you start well, with colors? I, 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 I kind of backed into it. One thing that I do love antiques and I, and in my home, I would say I kind of go for like an early 19th century, or sorry, 20th century look with 
within reason. I mean, my house isn't frilly like a Victorian right. um, photo or something, but but there's I've got some stuff from like 30s and 40s. Um, uh, my Pyrex, I like it as old as mm-hmm. I can find it, like that kind of stuff. But for this space, I wanted to do something different. And and so like, whereas if I had to pick a, a catalog that is like the way I would do my home, it's probably Crate and Barrel. Right. And with this place, I'm going a little more like, West Elm or CB2. Yeah. So it's much more like mod 60s, 70s uh-huh. kind of. Um, so I've got, I found, I actually did start with the furniture because that to me, I wanted a sofa, like a legit sofa. I also have a day bed in there. And that was funny because the landlord, when he was showing me the space and I was explaining to him what I was going to use it for, he goes, he's like, are you going to put a bed in here? I would put a bed in here. And I thought that's actually a really good idea because I work in bed a lot. So, but I couldn't decide like, the pink, I find paint colors very overwhelming to choose. Yeah. Um, so Wait, I started, can I interrupt and ask yeah. a question? Because you talked about how it's not a traditional like work, work share office space. Is it, what is it meant to be? Is it meant to be an, like, would it be an office above a business? Like that type yeah. of a. So it used to okay. be, it used to be like an attorney's office. Okay. So what ended up happening was they, a developer bought it and they cleared everybody out thinking they were going to develop it. Okay. And then the developer sold it. So it never got developed. So and the rent, not the, connected the rent is still really unit. good. So there's nobody no. else. You're really not sharing. I'm not it's sharing. It's not like a shared building at all. It is. Uh, just... No, it is a shared building. This just it just so happens that right now it's like me and the spiritualist in there. That's okay. it. There is a common bathroom, but I don't have to use it because I have my own bathroom. Okay. In the space, and I'm at the very back of the building. It's super quiet, even when the other offices start filling in, which I don't anticipate happening anytime soon. Um, it's going to still be very private. And and I tend to be there during times when like the other lady's not there. So I am often just like the only person in the building, which is kind of cool. So this is like every busy Oh my gosh. Uh, overwhelmed mother's fantasy. I know. I know <laughs> like I think people are super jealous of me right now and I've worked really hard to put it together because and I do. I mean, I don't really see myself entertaining clients up there necessarily, but I I, I have thought of it like being a really cool like collaborative workspace if I have people I'm working on a project with, there'll be plenty of space for them to come up there and hang out with me and we can just sh- shoot ideas off each other or whatever. So I'm really excited about do, that. I mean, it's very and you could do meetings up there. I, I mean, could, yeah. don't you think? Oh, yeah, I could. The pictures for I've... sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. sure. I don't know that. I mean, I just don't do a lot of um, that face-to-face stuff anyway because my clients tend to not be local. But right. I could see that, yes, for sure, the space could be used that way. And I'm planning on moving all my podcasting stuff. I haven't done that yet because the internet's not hooked up yet. But um, I will be podcasting from there at some point. It overlooks the lake, which is awesome. It's just – it's really – it's a great space. So – but okay. back to okay. decorating. Yeah, back to decorating. Yeah, decorating. So I decided to start with one furniture piece because I couldn't um, – I just – it was too hard. It was too abstract otherwise. So mm-hmm. I got a like a bright orange sofa from West Elm and then everything else kind of kind of fell in around that. So the walls are – in the personal space in the back are gray. Out in the kind of more businessy space, they're like a grayish blue with um, a mustard yellow accent wall. That's nice. where my desk will go up against that wall. And okay. then in the so, but the other room has got this awesome, like bright orange sofa. And then once I found that, I just started pieces started just kind of popping out of nowhere that made so mm-hmm. much sense. Like I got this really cool mid century, like blonde wood um, coffee table. It's awesome. I can't really describe it. It's round and like several tiers. And two end tables for the um, sofa and that I haggled. I never do that, but I haggled at the local (laughs) antique store and got a great deal. And I found like a fuzzy stool (laughs) that also was an antique store and I just loved it. And what's so fun is like, I feel like I don't have to be practical at all. If I see something and I like it, I'm like, yep, that's, that looks good. Um, I have a good friend who works for KitchenAid who's getting me like, she got me a really good deal on like an electric kettle so I can always make tea just stuff like that. So it's really filling out nicely. And I've spent some time there the last few days just getting it all up to snuff and then spent a long time working there yesterday. And it was great. Like I just, it's like being at home, but it's silent. Yeah. And there's no distractions. I'm not going to do dishes. There's no yeah. dishes to do. I mean, there, there's, it's just like all, what I like is to be able to just pick a place to sit. Sometimes I want to sit on a couch. Sometimes I want to sit at a desk, you know, right. Um, kick my feet up and work the way that I work best while feeling like I'm in a cozy place that I can, like I have access to things I need, like bathroom and food (laughs) and stuff if I want it. But I, you know, but I don't, and I also, I also found, you know, when I didn't have office space, I would often need to leave the house just to have a different vantage point. And I'm getting kind of that in this space. So yeah. 
It's so exciting. I know. I think, really I think we've just made a lot of people really envious, even if I they know. are not self-employed, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just to want to decorate yeah. a little um, room of their own. The it's other thing so I will exciting. say, it's been really fun being able to decorate a space totally differently from the way I would usually, because I've always been attracted to sort of that later mid-century look, um, 60s, right. 70s, but it's not the way I would do my own house probably. Right. So it's so fun to have this like little contained space that I can do whatever I want and make it my own. Um, and, and, and budget, budget wise too, you're going, it's, it's unusual in a house that you'd go from zero to furnished in a short period of time. Yes. I mean, nobody can afford to do that, but also it's just not usually the way it works, but you got to go from empty yeah, to, furnished. to furnished and you did thrift store and you did haggling and all of right. that, but it's, it's a, it's a much more contained budget, which then right. allows you to kind of be more purposeful about each piece. Right. Whereas absolutely. sometimes I feel like we're sort of victim of lots of like, either we need something and we got to go get it, or we get a lot of great, great hand-me-downs. I mean, beautiful things from my family or whatever, but it's not always, it sometimes just comes to us it's rather than hodgepodge us sometimes too. Yeah. And the, by far the biggest, um, by far, by far, the biggest investment was the sofa from West Elm. That's not, the stuff's not cheap. It's a futon. So it's not as expensive as like a real <laughs> sofa. Right. Um, but it was, it, you know, it was a chunk of change. It happened to be on sale the day I walked in the store and saw it happened to be 20% off that day, which made a big difference. And But I decided, like, that's a piece I will, whether or not I use this space forever or end up moving someplace else at some point, I will use this piece in some way yep. for a long time. So it was worth it to me. And um, I also got a vintage uh, record player. Um, awesome. on Craigslist for 50 bucks and it's like right. from the fifties. It's old and awesome. And that's, that's something I've wanted forever. And I just didn't have a place to put it at home. And now I have this, it works perfectly in the space and it's really cool. So I love yay. It. you'll have to come. Visit I love it. I know I need to come visit. We are welcoming our longtime sponsor Prep Dish back to the show today. And listeners, if you're looking to boost your protein intake, Prep Dish is making it so easy right now. When you sign up in January, you'll get access to a month's worth of the new Prep Dish Protein Boost meal plans. I love this, Sarah. Protein is so important for our health. It helps support mental clarity, sleep, energy, hormone balance, and more. And as busy moms, we're often not getting enough protein, especially at breakfast. With these meal plans from Prep Dish, you'll learn how to quickly prep four protein-rich dinners and one breakfast. Right. And like all prep dish meal plans, they make it so simple to shop once, prep for the week ahead of time and save time on busy weeknights by having your meals ready to heat and serve. And Megan, these meals sound so delicious and perfect for January. Listen to this slow cooker carnitas bowls, stuffed pepper soup, and then there's a Swiss chard mushroom and goat cheese frittata for breakfast. OK, I am adding that stuffed pepper soup to my rotation ASAP. This is a limited time offer, so make sure to sign up before the end of January to get your free bonus meal plans. To learn more and sign up now, visit prepdish.com slash the mom hour. Again, that's prepdish.com slash the mom hour for a month's worth of the new prep dish protein boost meal plans. Check it out. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies. But having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean, bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start ritual or add essential for women 18 plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. Um, well, let's sort of then broaden this to how do we get confidence in our home decor in general? I think, I do think we talked about this one time a long time ago and we, when we talked about the beyond baby book and concept and you wrote about it, maybe I can even link to that chapter, but 
I think what we've said before is that it just takes a long time to start to even know what your style is. And it can be overwhelming if you're looking at the pretty catalogs where everything just goes together. So do you feel like you're better now um, at just kind of making quicker decisions or not, not, not getting overwhelmed by choices? Yeah. Um, I I will say my house, my home decoration is in a state of atrophy right now (laughs) because what happened was I got everything I needed in here Mm -hmm. and I just sort of stopped like changing things. And I think it's because I've just been here now five years, I guess, in this house and I'm not seeing it with fresh eyes anymore. And, um, and it's getting a little stale. Like I got so comfortable that right. I got to the point where like, you know, every nail that I wanted to have something hanging on has something hanging yeah. on it now so I can be done, you know? And yeah. I actually, it's something I, I'm now that I have this little spark from decorating this small space, I'm mm-hmm. kind of looking around and saying, okay, what can I improve here at home as well? Um, <clears throat> but I definitely have a lot more confidence than I used to. The biggest thing for me that I used to have like very little confidence about was always art mm-hmm. and decorative pieces. Like, yeah. But I know what I like in a sofa. If I can find one I can afford, that's not a problem. Right. Um, but it's always been those little accents and stuff that have been hardest for me. And I've had to kind of get to the point where I, if I see something I like, I just trust myself and get it. I don't ask mm-hmm. for other people's opinions necessarily. Yeah. That's dangerous road. Um, and it all comes together. Like it all in the end, if you hang something on your wall and it's something you like, it's going to look good. It's like, yeah. it's you. So uh, yes. what about you? Do you think that's something Yeah. That's- Well, I I totally agree that moving, if you've moved recently or um, what's happened to us a couple of times is my parents have moved and have offered to give us, or in some cases we bought furniture from them. And anytime there's a big influx of something new, whether you move to a new space or just get a new, you know, larger piece of anything, um, it kind of forces you to jigsaw puzzle everything around. And I really like that. I feel like every time that happens, I get a little happier with Mm -hmm. where things are that just this last year. So right at the beginning of 2016, we bought a secondhand piano. I talked about it on an episode probably a year ago and that just that purchase, because I, I really like decorating surfaces. I feel like I'm much better on a tablescape. So like the top of a hutch or a bar. That's fun for me. And it's Um, easy. And maybe it's because it's that confined space and you can Mm -hmm. change it out easily. So that, as opposed to like a bare wall that needs art on it, which is harder for me. Um, So like the piano came and then we had needed another piece, like a buffet bar type piece in our dining room and, um, found one on Wayfair, um, which we should also link to Wayfair has good deals on all different styles of furniture. Um, so we had two new pieces in the same kind of living space early last year. And it was really fun because once there's kind of a new surface to decorate or even the wall above it, like I'm making hand motions right now, (laughs) you know, I love the look of like a gallery wall with a few small frames or prints that you can change out. So I feel like, yeah, I have gotten more confident and I almost appreciate when you have to move or you have to rearrange something or you have to get rid of a piece of furniture. It just kind of opens, opens up new opportunities. And like you said, when you don't do that for a while, you just kind of stop. Yeah. Stop yes. Being and I'm, and I've, and I've seen that, like, I can tell that I'm not enjoying my home space as much as I was for a while. So I'm hoping I can, you know, use some of this energy to, um, to spark me a little bit. Another thing. So, um, my sister, um, is really inspiring to me in this way because she will tell you, you she'll be the first to tell you she's not like a decorating expert or anything like that, but she and her boyfriend, Eric will do anything to their house. Like they will buy, if they have a, they have like a, a suit of armor (laughs) in their (laughs) living room because they saw it and they thought it was hilarious. So they bought it. Like it's a lot of that kind of stuff. It's just very eclectic and hilarious and really suits their personalities. They buy big pieces of art, which I think is, it yeah. sound, it's like scary and bold, but it, but then you don't have to think about 8 million little pieces all coming right. together. It's like, you've just yeah. got this huge painting or print on the wall. It kind of makes a statement, just like having, you know, a brightly colored sofa or something yeah. like that um, to kind of build around. It says something immediately that you, so it speaks for itself. Right. Um, but they'll do things like, you know, I would last, last time I was there, they had moved, they had swapped the living room and the dining room. So it's like one of those, it's an old house, but you walk into the kitchen at the back, like at the back of the house, uh-huh. um, like a galley kitchen. And then you would walk into the dining room and then mm-hmm. to the right, there was like a little sitting room. 
mm-hmm. but they never really it was awkward because there was a fireplace on one wall and then a french doors on another wall so there was never any place to put furniture all together and cluster right. it it was like too big right. so one day they're like wait why don't we put the dining room table in that room it's a longer room it makes more sense um and it was kind of like revolutionary because it fits so much better now that you, you still have to walk through the living room to get to the dining room but it's like right. five steps it's not a big yeah. deal and the other room works and the dining room works. And I'm th- I was like, oh my gosh, like I could do that too because I have a problem where my dining room is right off of the kitchen and it's narrow. So there's, I always feel like it's too cluttered in there. Like there's yeah. never the da- the tables in your way when you're walking yeah. through. Um, there's two other rooms I could potentially use as a dining room if I just yeah. was willing to sort of do something shake. a little different and shake things up. So well, that's I another think thing. Being Moving in people's house, yeah, being in people's different houses is so much fun for that. And if you have a, you know, a, sometimes, especially if you're a mom of young kids, you kind of stop going to other people's houses, right? Unless it's like a play date, in which case you're looking at the floor and the babies, and you know. Um, but it is really fun to get ideas. We live in a neighborhood where the homes were all constructed from the same cookie cutter. There's four or five different floor models, which in some ways I've never loved that concept. And I, I always yearn someday to not live in a, you know, like a pre-planned neighborhood like that. However, it is fun to see the way that different people use identical space. So that's super fun is to go through the houses of the exact same floor plan and see what people have done, where they place furniture, what they do on a wall, because you can mm-hmm. translate it to your house. It's kind of fun. So yeah, when, whenever, whenever you get the chance to really be in someone else's space, I think is really fun. Um, and then I was going to talk a little bit about holiday decorating too, because we are heading into that season. And that's another one that is fun for me because it feels less serious and yeah, permanent. You don't, yes, and, absolutely. Um, and I, I like to just, um, like I take everything off the mantle. I kind of start over with the mantle and any tablescapes, like I said, the top of the piano or, you know, we have kind of an entryway table and I kind of, I spend a day after Thanksgiving of taking everything down, even if I might put it back up, if it's something that works great with the holiday stuff, but kind of starting over. And I think that's, it's fun to practice your decorating skills that way. And then the added bonus is in January, when you put Christmas away, you kind of have to start over again. And sometimes I even forget how I had my mantle or the piano before Mm -hmm. and then do something different. So the holidays, even if you're not super into holiday decorating, it can be a good way to sort of like practice and just have fun. Yeah. And I also think holidays, like you said, with your sister being really adventurous and whimsical, you know, holiday decorating too can maybe bring out a side that if you are more cautious or conservative or just don't have, you know, the same tastes during the rest of the year, you can have a giant lawn Santa if you want, or you can, you know, it gives you (laughs) kind of permission to go outside what you normally do. So I think it's fun. Do you have any favorite holiday decorating, like, parts of it or any well, pieces that you get out every year and just love? Yeah, or- I always put the same stuff out every year. And actually this year is going to be a little different because last year I realized that I have been carrying around bins of stuff that I think John's mom gave us when we got married because we didn't have any money. And so she just kind of gave us like a box of cast off holiday stuff. <laughs> and I would feel kind of obligated to put all of it out every year. Right. And I and sometimes I'd be like, oh, I don't really like this. And so last year, I just finally gave myself permission to get rid of a lot of stuff. So I yeah. saved all my favorite stuff. Um, you know, the, some more quality. I have a really um, beautiful Mary statue that uh, – I've had, I think my mom gave it to me the year we got married. Like I've had stuff forever. Um, But this year I think I'm actually going to add, and I really have only added ornaments, tree ornaments Mm -hmm. over the last year. I have not purchased any new holiday decor in a long time. And so this year I'm going to give myself permission to have a little budget and just freshen it up because some part of me really loves the tradition of taking out the same stuff every year, but I also want it to be stuff I like and I want it to evolve a little bit. And so that's, where we're at with that right now. And I'm the same way. I like clear off the buffet. I clear, I love surfaces. Yeah, so, too. um, I clear off the buffet and the little end tables and, and, uh, console tables that we have. And I end up decorating those surfaces similarly, I would say, but I don't remember everything year to year. Yeah. And, um, another thing I do is I keep Christmas cards that we get holiday cards. I put them in with the Christmas decorations That's because awesome. then every year I can pull them out and be like, Oh, I've you know, always so I have... looked for a way to do that and I've never had um, just a place to put them or a way to do it. I've seen cute ideas like punching a one hole punch and putting them on a big binder ring and keeping them oh, in a yeah. basket or, yeah. you know. 
Yeah, and I don't um, display them or anything, but they're just there but to you just kind keep of, them in there. Just to keep them because I'm already looking at holiday stuff anyway. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, you know, look at this picture of so and so three years ago. And it just it's just a little happy moment and then move on. Yeah. So, okay. So, <laughs> so you don't actually display them. Yeah, that's a good no, idea. I, don't I feel like them. I do something different every year, but I always wish to somehow you know, yeah, look at them I, I, I never, I never really display holiday cards. I might stick a close family members or friends up on the fridge. Yeah. But that's about, because I get a lot of them. And frankly, I get a lot of them from people I don't know very well. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, where do you yeah. draw the I, line? My mom, my mom always had a basket and then it was really easy. There was no work involved, but oh, I liked yeah. it because I'd come home from college and, you know, just look through the basket. Like, yeah. you know, so it was just kind of out and then, you know, you could see which new ones had come. And, um, so it is, but yeah, I don't really display them yeah. either. Um, I did the same thing you're talking about with, um, I actually asked for my Christmas gift from my mother-in-law if she would just let me go shopping for Christmas decorations at the start of the season. Cause I think she was visiting us around Thanksgiving and kind of asking what, you know, what I'd like for Christmas. I said, actually, what I'd like is some new Christmas decorations. Cause we'd been in this house. I think it was our second Christmas in this house. And I, same thing, I had kind of purged some stuff I didn't like anymore. And so I went to Lowe's and, um, just got all kinds of different little things. And actually this year it will be fun. Cause I don't even remember everything I got. It was all new to me last year. So I probably yeah. won't remember. And this year it'll be fun to get it out again. So I do think it's, it's something you can budget for, or, you know, look at as, as one of your gifts to yourself because it's, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. And I, and I go ahead. Oh, right after Thanksgiving. So I think you and I are. Uh, okay. So I used to force myself to wait till after Thanksgiving. Um, and I've decided, I think I'm not going to hold myself to that quite as, uh, quite as strongly anymore because honestly, I tend, when I tend to do, especially if Thanksgiving happens to fall late in November mm-hmm. is like, then I don't get to it right away. And then next yeah. thing I know it's already into December and I've missed like some of my favorite time to have holiday decorations up. So I think I might actually do it like the day of Thanksgiving this uh-huh. year because we're not going anywhere and it would just be nice to to have that kind of going. And I don't know, you know, so yeah. yeah. The other thing I was going to say about that's nice about clearing off those spaces for holiday decorations is that then when you have to put everything away, you kind of have the opportunity then to do it differently. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's can also be kind of fun. Okay. So let's, um, go into our second more than mom topic, which is what we like to eat and drink, especially when we're going out. Um, you're not on a juice cleanse, are you? This is not going to make you too hungry. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> the last time we talked about food, you were. I know that hungry. was unfortunate. I don't know. My timing was way off. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm eating normally right now. So. All right. Um, yeah. So we thought it'd be fun, especially going into the holidays, but all year round at, when we're out at a restaurant or we have some kid free going out time, what are the things we love to drink, eat? What are we most kind of crave when we're going out to eat? Um, and all of that. So do you want to start Megan? Yeah. So I I guess the first thing, like when I'm eating out, um, I always want to pick something I wouldn't make at home most likely, or maybe would have only rarely make. So I actually eat a lot of steak when I'm out Mm. because I just don't make steak at home very often. Um, and I also have this weird thing for French dip sandwiches. Oh, I'm going to tell you the story of how this happened. So John's family is from Buffalo, New York. And mm-hmm. there's a thing in Buffalo, a regional thing called um, roast beef on weck, I think is what it's called. And so there are these little buns that have, I think, caraway seeds on top. And I had never, I've never been a big roast beef, you know, beef sandwich kind of person ever. But in Buffalo, it's everywhere and that's what you do. So I, and I think theirs have like horseradish on them, um, the, okay. be- the beef on weck. And that's actually the third W in BW3, in case you've always wondered. Why I is it called BW3? That. It used to be Buffalo Wild Wings and Weck. And then they dropped the Weck because they realized it was so regional. No one outside of Buffalo had any idea How do you what even it was. spell Weck? How do you spell W-E-C-K. that? W-E-C-K. Oh, never I didn't know that. all this either until I was in Buffalo like two years ago. So okay. when I was in Buffalo, I ended up having beef on Weck everywhere I went and became completely obsessed with it. Um, then when I got home, in order to, I guess you know, make like the consolation prize for not having access to beef on Weck anymore was that I started getting basically any sort of roast beef sandwich anywhere that I could. So around Mm -hmm. here, that tends to usually be like a French dip type sandwich. Um, And I will get those everywhere. Like every, if if somebody has that on the menu, I feel like I have to try it. 
Yeah. So that's something that I get often. I also like to get really good salads when I eat out because I feel mm-hmm. like my salads at home are always bad. Right. Yeah. We've talked about that. Like the only salad that actually is good is some a one someone that else That you makes don't for have you. to make yourself. Yeah. Because yeah, I don't know what it is. Have a ton of stuff in them. Um, yeah, actually one of my favorite meals is like what I would call basically like a not healthy salad. Like you call it a salad, but the chicken is breaded and there's a lot of cheese and right. I mean, and and I guess at home, I just don't put the effort in. I could make, I mean, I could make a a good salad at home. I just, I just don't, I buy like the bagged lettuce or I chop up romaine and I toss it in with some, a few things and uh, I just don't put the effort in. So when I'm eating out, I like to do, I like to do that. I like to get a variety of salads. So those are my three like go-tos. Yeah. I'm thinking of the things that like are my go-tos. If it's on the menu, I will eat it. One of them is a Cobb salad, like a really, really good Cobb salad is one of my favorites. And, um, when I was pregnant one time, I think my second pregnancy, that was like a pretty strong craving. And it was so strong that I didn't just want any Cobb salad. I wanted the one that was served at the restaurant where I worked like 10 years previously. And I spent like yeah. half that pregnancy trying to either order or make <laughs> a cob salad that was similar enough. Um, so that's one of my go-tos. I'm with you on, on ordering things I wouldn't make at home, which for me a lot of times is seafood because I mm. love fish and shellfish. Oh, gosh, I can't believe I-, I didn't mention seafood. Oh my gosh. All right, go on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do the same no, thing. Yeah. I, um, and we, you know, we cook salmon at home and we cook shrimp at home periodically. Um, but we don't do a lot. We don't, we're not very interesting with them. Like with shrimp, we'll do a shrimp stir fry or maybe shrimp on the grill and then salmon. We just cook it pretty simply. So, um, interesting seafood would be for sure. Um, other things that are, depends on the, where you're going, but like, I can't yes. resist a breakfast burrito. Like I, I could eat burritos pretty much all like for the rest of my life. If I had to pick a food that I was only going to eat for the rest of my life, it would probably be a burrito, both breakfast and normal burritos. So that's always going to be, but we have so much Mexican food around here and mm-hmm. have so many varying qualities that I wouldn't say I order yeah. a burrito everywhere I go. Cause it might not be the best thing on the menu, but a really good burrito or a really good breakfast burrito is if I'm super hungry, that's going to be one of my favorite things. Um, for nicer, like higher end restaurants, I really like duck. And that's another thing that oh. you don't make at home. So if yeah, I, no, I find duck to be a little dense. I like it in theory, but like a couple bites in and I'm like, eh, yeah, it's so heavy. I, I tend to like the flavors that duck is often paired with, you know, like a lot of like a sweet, like something cranberry or orange or a lot of those flavor profiles. Mm -hmm. And it just seems fancy. So I feel like. And the skin is great too. too. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Really good. Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, (laughs) right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one time use only. Bionic shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution. Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full-body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. 
Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Um, so... Yeah. How about? Oh, drink? that made me. That made me think of one more thing that I am a little obsessive with. Um, as fish tacos, I will get. Yeah. We just spent a week in Florida with John's mom, and I think I had fish tacos like every restaurant I went to. But the thing about fish tacos is not everyone does them the same. I like. I think yeah. it's the Baja style where it's just like a little squeeze of lime. Yep. The fish is just lightly breaded, and then there's cabbage and like yep. a little crema, and that's it. I don't. And I like it on a corn tortilla. Like I don't like it when yep. they start adding stuff and like che- cheese to me completely kills a fish taco. Yeah. I don't know why cooks do the restaurateurs do that to me. That is a travesty. I, yeah. And I, you're, <laughs> I'm speaking as someone who pretty much likes cheese on everything and thinks everything is better with cheese, but I totally agree with you there. And I like the exact same kind of fish tacos. And I, I kind of think they've jumped the shark haha, here where they are on every menu and they're not all, they're not all good. So yeah. yeah. But I, I always like, thought the idea of a fish taco sounded mm-hmm. kind of gross and weird until I had one that was that style. Um, yeah. At a play, I think I want to say I was in New York and I was just blown. I mean, I was obsessed. Like I became yeah. blown away. And then every time I would go anywhere that has access and even Michigan, I mean, there's access to fresh white fish here. You can make a, yeah. a good taco. I just feel like they Midwest it up too much and they just add too much crap to it. And it, mm-hmm. to me, the cheese or like salsa on it, it just overwhelms the fish. And the whole point is you have this really fresh piece of mm-hmm. fish and a little bit of cream and like some crunch and then a lime just brings the flavor out. You don't need all the rest of that stuff. So I agree, except that I do like like a really good pico de gallo, not a salsa y salsa, but like a rough right. chopped, you know, tomato yeah, onion no, I, with the I lime. That. Yeah. Um, I can get behind that. Yeah. Fish tacos. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, so what about drinks and cocktails? If you're out um, during the holidays or other times, do you have go to your I think you're like me. I think we're both very situational drinkers. Yes. Like it depends. It depends who you're with and who you are. <laughs> yeah, it depends yeah. Who, you, who you're with and where you are. Um, I am so I am so boring sometimes when it comes to this. Like when I'm out, I almost always just stick with red wine. I know it. I understand its effects on me. Like I feel like yeah. getting a cocktail in a. I have no idea when I get a cocktail in a restaurant. I really don't know how much alcohol is in it. Um, those can kind of be a little bit of a punch sometimes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they're super sweet. And I don't really like sweet drinks. Um, I don't either. Yeah. We we uh are like really love gimlets. And I don't remember why we started drinking those, except I think I just thought the name was hilarious. I think I was watching Mad Men at the time right. or something. And it was, it's very retro. So I asked John to make a gimlet and he makes a really good gimlet. And so, um, I have not found a bar or restaurant I'll, every now and then I'll try one someplace and it's disappointing. Um, so I will drink at home a John gimlet and sometimes I will get it. Like, especially if I'm having pizza or like it's a hot summer day, I will have a, light-ish beer. Okay. But like, I'm not into hoppy beers at all. I don't like hoppy beers, but I, Brian and I were just talking about this the other day. I do like, when I lived in England and traveled in England and Scotland and stuff, I, and this is, I'm not a beer person, so I'm going to describe it using all the wrong words. But I think what I like is like more malty because I actually will like a brown oh. ale or like an amber ale. I like, I amber like ales. beers that are not too hoppy and also are not super carbonated. And I don't know what, what the words are to describe when it's yeah. more like it has a fo- it's a little more foamy and a little bit more flat, not as heavy as like a porter or a stout, but like right. in the, the best I can describe would be like a brown ale or an amber ale. And, um, we're just not, we don't buy beer. It's not really what we drink at home, but I, I can really appreciate a good draft beer. I just am kind of out of the habit of knowing what I like. And we were out the other day and I tried to ask the server and it was good. What they brought was good, but I don't have quite the vocabulary that I would to describe like what I like in a cocktail or a wine, but I do. Like yeah. Beer. Yeah. Do you know, do you familiar with the beer fat tire? Uh huh. Yes. I think that's the that amber ale. There. That's an amber ale. And it's funny because I, I think I ordered that once when I was with a friend and I, 
I said, like, after I tasted it, I said, oh, I like this. And then I was like, I think I'm going to forget that I like this. So I was like, please, um, I'm going to ask you sometime if I'm at a restaurant, I'm going to text you and say, do I like fat tire or not? And it became this joke, like, because I ever sometimes will just text him and be like, so what was that? What was it I said about uh, about fat tire? Did I like it? And he's like, I think you liked it. So it, it turns out I do like it. Um, but that's an amber ale. And that's not something I would have thought I would like. It's right. a little more flavor flavor, yeah. I guess, than I thought I would like in a beer, like thinking Corona would usually be more right. my speed. <clears throat> but um, but I really do like it. It's more of a sipping beer. With yeah, food, and I actually, you know, I like that about if I'm having it with a meal, and I'm not, you know, my goal is to just have. You're not just drink. swilling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm just not <laughs> chugging. Um, what about Bell's Amber? Because that's Michigan, right? Yeah, that's so Michigan. Ha- I, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I've had it a few times and liked it. I just again, I forget. Like I get some place that yeah. has it, and I'm like, do I like this? I can't remember. Well, so I think- I've gotten to the point where I just let the waitress or a waiter often pick for me. Or bartender, yeah. I'll just say what you know. Here's what I like. Here's what I don't like. We have so many breweries around here, and the names right. of the beers are all bizarre, and I don't know what any of them means. So I'll just ask them to pick something for me, and they'll usually give me a taste, and they're often right on. So yeah, it works out. No, pretty well. I, I'm the same way. Um, and and yeah, beer beer tasting is fun. It's underrated. Um, yes, I do like. Uh, I will have some kind of like girly martini every once in a while if I'm out and like you were saying they can pack a punch usually if I'm ordering one I know that and it's definitely a sipping you know like I'm not drinking it the same way I would (laughs) of another drink but I'm with you on the sweet I don't typically order like craft cocktails where there's a bunch of different ingredients in them because they're the price point versus how much I enjoy them compared to how much I would just enjoy a glass of Sauvignon Blanc is not worth it. And maybe there's just, I haven't found the right one, but I'm with you. I like lime. I like lime and citrusy type things. I don't like overly sweet. And I feel like if I'm paying for hard liquor, I, I want mostly hard liquor. Is that terrible? Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, no, I don't want, you like, don't want all that filler pear, pear juice or whatever right. you're putting in it. Um, yeah. But I have to say, I like a good cosmopolitan and it's so dated now because, you know, sex in the city was yeah, 20 years ago, long time ago. Um, but yeah. if there was another thing like that or a lemon drop or something that is, you know, has a good amount of booze in there and just enough of something else to make it not straight. I don't drink straight hard liquor, but yeah, um, I don't, I except I do like, I actually kind of like tequila. This isn't that weird, but I mean, it's not like I go to sit around drinking tequila every day. <laughs> People get into it, it though. I mean, you yeah. can get really into tequila just like you can into wines. I just, I don't like the. Taste I think it's of best it. I don't get really into tequila, yeah. but <laughs> just as a life choice, I think I'm just going to steer clear of that. But, but yes, you can. You can really get into stuff like that. And, and it's, how I think about it's the interesting Moscow that mules have Moscow uh, mules. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. The shark. But like you are. for me, for me, Moscow mules, it's like a one and done. Um, yeah. I like them, but they're the flavor to me. It's like the so sometimes they're so gingery that I'm like almost have a hard time drinking them and then yes. I'm done. Like my stomach yes. is all warm afterward and yeah. so that's like a a nice, you know, pre pre meal or with an appetizer yeah. or something drink, but I don't go crazy on it. Um yeah. and I do it's it's interesting you drink white wine and I drink red. Yeah. One of the several ways we're different. Um I, know. I almost always get Malbec because there's something about it I know that I'm gonna like. It's like the good it's a good blend. Cabernets are sometimes way too fruity and jammy I think is how they describe it um big and bold I don't yeah. necessarily like that I like older like old world wines like Bordeaux and stuff but those mm-hmm. can be sometimes like a little mushroomy or dirty tasting <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm feeling experimental I might get like a Bordeaux or something like that but usually I just go for Malbec because I know I like it yeah it's nice and dry well, and red wine, I actually do love red wine. And my problem is I probably talked about it on the show, but I, I am really sensitive to headaches with red wine and not even just if I had a bender and drank like six glasses, I can get a headache from even one glass of red wine, mm-hmm. depending on how much food I had in my stomach and how close to bedtime. So I'm not, I cannot really drink very much. And I really do love it. My dad is a wine collector and he shares some really good wines with us. I like, um, I like more drinkable red wines. Like I agree the really, really big and bold, unless I'm having it with a big steak dinner or something mm-hmm. is just sometimes overpowering. But, um, yeah, in a perfect world, I'd have a glass of white earlier in the night and then maybe a glass of red with food, but I, I cannot, I don't know you if can't can't count I, on that. Saying, I can't, I can't drink as much red wine as I'd like to. I don't know how that right. sounds, but, um, yeah, yeah no, that makes sense. I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I like and white I, wine. I, I'm much less picky about white wine, so I can drink cheap yeah. white wine without too much consequence. You know, I definitely like some things over others. I tend towards Sauvignon Blanc, and I and I like some Chardonnays and not others. I don't like sweeter. I don't like really light and really sweet white wines. I like slightly 
bigger white wines, but yeah. I'm definitely easier to please with white too than red. So it's just a safer, like you're saying with Malbec, it's a safer bet. I almost never like Chardonnay. I can't think of a time I've liked a Chardonnay, but I, I do like Sauvignon Blanc and I do like Pinot um, Grigio. It just wouldn't be my first choice, but like, you know, sometimes. Now, as a good alternative to white wines, I really kind of got into rosés for a while, especially sparkling dry rosés. Um, yeah, I think I like when people hear rosé, they think of blush, which is not right. what we're talking about. Um, yeah. We're not talking about a handle of Ernest and Gallo here. It's, yeah. it's like a, it's just tastes like a really, it's like cold, but kind yeah. of like a red wine. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. If you're not into yeah. that, try it. You might like yeah. it. No, I agree. Especially summertime or like an early happy hour type of, yeah, it feels festive. Now, I can't remember how you, no, you like champagne, right? And I do not I, really I do. like champagne. But it has to be, it has to be dry. And this is so funny. John has a client who is in, insanely wealthy and every now and then they just give him a bottle of Dom. Uh-huh. Um, what is it? Perignon. What's the whole? Dom Perignon. Dom, Dom Perignon. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> And just because, I don't know. So we were like hoarding the bottles for a while because we're like, when are we going to bust out a bottle of Dom? I mean, it just seems yeah. so ridiculous. And we finally opened it on New Year's Eve and no one really liked it. And so now we call it junk. We're like, oh, look at that junk Dom Perignon. <laughs> like, what a bunch of crap. I mean, it's, it's hilarious because it's very, very expensive. Um, yeah. And it's waste, completely wasted on us. And so they keep giving it to him and we keep trying to like make ourselves like it and we don't. Well, I have no, first of all, um, champagne is another one that can just really, I don't like the way it makes me feel. It gives me a really quick, like sugar high kind of. Yes, me too. And, and I will get, I will have a terrible headache if I yeah, drink more than like a glass. And so I like the idea of it at a wedding. I mean, I will sip champagne at a wedding and that is pretty much it. I, I am always kind of envious of people who order it at a bar because it feels very classy and swanky, but I would never do it. Yeah. Um, I just don't like it enough. And then how about Bloody Marys? Do you like Bloody Marys? I don't. I feel like people I do, do not. Do. I do not enjoy salty drinks. I do not enjoy tomato-based drinks. If everyone's drinking a Bloody, I'll have a mimosa because yeah. it's, it, it grosses me out. And if everyone's it's like drinking mimosas, like, I, It's I like drinking a- cold soup with booze in it. So I, I get, get it. Okay, so I get your point. I'm going to tell a really quick side story of how I learned to like Bloody Marys, which I may have told you, but I don't think I've told on the podcast. And I kind of get it. Like, I don't actually like tomato-based or super savory drinks either, but I do like Bloody Mary. So why? Here's why. When I was working, I worked at a really, really busy, popular brunch restaurant in Chicago called the Silver Cloud Bar and Grill in Bucktown. It's no longer there, but it was there for a long time. It was a very cool place for, like, the pre-hipsters to go to brunch. And I always worked brunch. And we were packed. And I would work, like, 10-hour shifts on my feet and make a ton of money, even though our food wasn't that expensive, but you would just turn and turn and turn tables. And I worked nights there too, but brunches were like, I worked every Saturday and Sunday for like three years at the same restaurant. And that when the crowds died down at like, I mean, we had the latest brunch in the city at one point. So brunch was served until like four, but I feel like the crowds would finally start to die down like at two, one thirty or two. And mm-hmm. people who you know, had eaten breakfast, they'd eaten breakfast. People who came for lunch had eaten lunch. And then all the people who came anywhere in there for brunch. Um, and so the bartender would make drinks for the staff and we'd be allowed to have a cocktail while we kind of continued to work the floor, but it was much, much quieter, but they only made Bloody Mary. So it was like staff Bloody Mary's was always like the really exciting time. That <laughs> meant, like things had died down. You were going to survive the day. And right. that's how I learned to like Bloody Mary's. And we made, they made really, really good ones. I don't like it too thick and chunky, but I don't like a really watery Bloody Mary either. I, what I like about drinking Bloody Mary's also is it, do, I drink them really slow. Um, yeah. I don't like olives or pickles. So I like mine with a lot of lime and celery salt on the rim, but for a day drink or watching football or even like just it, at a at a fun bar that makes really good cocktails, I love a good Bloody Mary. So we have a pizza place in town that comes with a slice of pizza in the Bloody Mary, and they're five bucks on Sundays. <laughs> and they're like, it's got a spear that I think it's got olives and pickles, and then a piece of pizza. And it's so funny because often we'll get there and I'm starving and I want my food like right now, and I'm watching everyone basically eat their drink. Yeah, and it makes me so jealous. Like I want one really badly at that moment, yeah. but not enough to order one. Yeah. <laughs> We used so. to, yeah, at that restaurant that we had one with um, shrimp on it. And I've seen other yeah. things, bacon, bacon. I've never yeah. seen a piece of pizza on Bloody Mary. That's pretty awesome. It's, yeah, it's um, pretty awesome. Well, the last thing I was going to ask is what about, do you have a Starbucks in your town, first of all? I don't know this. Yeah, we have one inside the grocery store. Okay. Which is not quite I don't the really same go thing. there. No. But um, for any kind of specialty <laughs> coffee shop, like if you were to meet a friend at a nice coffee shop or be shopping in a big city and go to a Starbucks, do you have, I know you're not a coffee drinker, but do you have like 
non-alcoholic, like warm, wintry, like splurgy drink that you would order at a place like that? I am so boring when it comes to like my, you know, I guess daily drink. Um, I just drink black tea. I either get like an English breakfast or an Earl Grey or sometimes I'll go like with something a little more daring. Um, I don't ever do like a tea latte and they keep thinking that that's what I want because we have a right. place called Big B. It's a, like a Michigan-based coffee shop. But I guess that's probably the closest thing to like a Starbucks that I would go to. Right. Um, and I'll say, oh, I'd like a cup of tea. And they're like, oh, like a tea latte? Nope. I just <laughs> nope. want a cup of tea. On a hot day, I might mix things up crazy and get iced tea. Right. Um, every now and then. I, Starbucks actually does have a really good herbal tea that I got one time because I was desperate. Um, for something. And I, I think actually I needed to use their internet. So I had to buy something and oh, it was right. way too hot to get hot tea, but it was like this pomegranate iced tea, I think. That was really good. I mean, I could definitely see myself splurging on that all the time, but it's expensive. Right. And I make a good cup of tea at home. So I don't, right. I don't really frequent that kind of place too often. Every now and then I will also get like hot chocolate. I really love yeah. a good hot chocolate. I, I so. love a good hot chocolate too. And I love like even like a diner hot chocolate with whipped cream from the can, but I still love it. Like, I mean, I, a good, a good quality hot chocolate is better, but I pretty much love hot chocolate. Um, yeah, I don't frequent, I mean, I, I'm not an all day coffee drinker. I have my one cup in the morning and then, um, I don't really like the feeling of too much caffeine after that, but if it's cold yeah. or if I'm Christmas shopping or something like that, um, Starbucks has the flat white. Do you know what a flat white is? Kind of no. became a, a trend last year. So I love a cappuccino. If I, I don't like lattes cause it's too much milk. It's like too, I don't, it feels like a glass of warm milk for me. Like for you yeah. drinking a Bloody Mary feels like tomato soup. Like I, there's something right. about a big glass of hot milk that is not appetizing to me. Um, <laughs> but I like a cappuccino because it's kind of the right ratio of coffee and milk. And then, but then there's all the foam that I think if you're drinking it in a mug where they, where if you're having it there, then they can do the pretty foam art and all that. That's fine. But in a to-go yeah. cup, the foam is just like air. There's not, you're not really like even experiencing it. So a flat white is kind of a cross between a latte and a cappuccino. And I guess it was really oh, okay. big in Australia and New Zealand and then London and then Starbucks got a hold of it and made it something everyone knows about. But it is really good. So if you're a coffee drinker this winter and you want to try something new, it's basically a cross between a latte and a cappuccino. So it's a stronger latte or a cappuccino without all the foam. And I think traditionally it's made with whole milk. So if you can stomach that and it sounds good, it's kind of a treat. But you can, you know, Starbucks will make it with skim or whatever. And there's something else yeah. about the way they heat the milk and the w- the way the espresso is that makes it a flat white. And it is really yummy. So if I were to indulge oh. in like an afternoon coffee, that's probably what it'll be this year. So I also want to know, we're talking about non-alcoholic drinks. I also want to throw out that if someone is not drinking for any reason, um, LaCroix <laughs> is a great way to kind of make interesting drinks. Um, I am a sipper and I work from home, which can be very dangerous in the summer because I want to sit outside on my patio and work and have a yummy drink in my hand. And, yeah. you know, it's like one beer at, th- at 11 is one or at 11, <laughs> one beer. <laughs> okay. Let's just say one is one thing, but I, then I, I either want to go to sleep yeah, or like keep going. Sleepy. So that's the problem. Yeah. So what I started doing was I would make a drink with, uh, with LaCroix, but I would put bitters in it. And it actually, mm. you can kind of make something that tastes a little a little bit like a cocktail kind of. It just makes it more right. interesting. It just gives it like a, a more, I don't know, it gives it kind of that interesting boozy flavor without yeah. booze. Um, I also cut white and rosé wine with LaCroix a lot mm-hmm. and it tastes really good. And so you can have something really light in the afternoon that tastes, tastes a little bit like a wine spritzer, um, but yeah. even better because it's it's delicious, delicious LaCroix. Yeah. And also I think like a wedge of lime, like if you're having something like something about just cutting up a lime and having a squeeze of lime and whatever you're having just makes it feel festive. So there's lots of ways to mocktail it up. Um, well now everyone knows what we order. Everyone knows about our drinking habits and our eating habits. Sarah's real happy if there's fish tacos, a burrito and a bloody Mary. Sarah's pretty happy. All those (laughs) things together. I think for me it'd be like steak, potatoes, a good salad, a fish taco on the side, beer, and a bottle of Malbec, oh. and a <laughs> so, yeah, awesome. Um, well, okay, real quick before we wrap because we went longer than I think we were going to. I have a quick story that um, just want to throw a shout out to a listener, Katie, who recognized me at a playground this weekend and came up to me and is a listener of our show 
and totally like fangirled about our show in person. And that's never happened to me. It was so much fun. It's never happened to me either. You're so lucky. I know. So she, I guess she follows us on Instagram, both personally and the show, which is why she knew what I looked like. And then she heard my voice and recognized it from the podcast. And she came up and she was like, are you Sarah Powers? Um, and it was really, really sweet. She was so sweet and she lives really close to me and, um, didn't find the show through anyone we know locally. So there's no like real life connection, just random. She had a cute little toddler and a brand new baby. And so big shout out, totally made my weekend and made me feel like a celebrity. And good for Katie for like taking that risk to walk up and talk to you. Cause I, you know, I have like face blindness, I think sometimes, and I would probably sit there and second guess myself the entire time. Like, is that really her? Is that really her? Is that really her? And then by the time I got the guts up to go say anything the moment would have passed so good yeah, for you Katie was, for yeah, she was being super, bold and I said the same thing to her I was like thank you so much for just approaching and she was so sweet so we actually got to talk for quite a while and the kids were playing and Brian was there so he kind of took over with the kids and um so I talked to her for quite a while so that was a first and very fun for me so thanks Katie awesome um, thanks Katie all right well we will be back next week you guys and thanks for everything yeah see you then The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like Chatbooks. Chatbooks makes it beyond easy to create beautiful photo books by importing your digital photos from anywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Google Photos, or directly from your phone. The books come in a variety of sizes with beautiful cover options and binding styles to choose from, and they start at just $15. Plus, we have a great deal just for our listeners. Use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20% off your purchase. Just download the Chatbooks app and use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20%. Hi, friends. Megan here. I wanted to let you know about a new podcast I've just launched called The Teas Made. Think of it as a weekly cozy conversation with me over your favorite hot beverage on topics like wellness, creativity, family, hospitality, and more. Just look for The Teas Made with Megan Francis wherever you get your podcasts or head to theteasmade.com to find all those episodes. The Tease Made is your reminder to take a little break from the busyness of life. So come on in and get comfy. The Tease Made.